to give you some ideas, I think, that are critical on uh, in survey design and, and uh, application. And uh, one is that when you do an employee survey, um, I really recommend that you do a census, not a sample, when you're doing employee survey research. Survey every single employee. And here's the reason why. It's not that you couldn't sample your workforce and get an adequate reading on uh, the, what's going on in your organizations from the employee's perspective, um, because you can. You can work with uh, very small cell sizes and have a high degree of statistical reliability. But if you don't do a census, you can't get down to the, to the department, unit, satellite level. And you need to do that to be able to get a reading on, uh, you know, specific managers because they're so critical in the organization. Um, employees will not take a survey if they feel that the results are not going to be confidential. They just will not do it. Um, two things drive statistical reliability. One is sample size. And if you do a census, sample size is not an issue because you're surveying everybody. You don't need to worry about the size of the sample. But the second thing that drives statistical reliability are response rates. Here's the key to response rates. If response rates fall below 50%, something called non-response bias can be introduced into the survey. You cannot be sure if, the if they're below 50%. You can't be sure if the people who are choosing not to respond are the same as the people that are choosing to respond. And you'll, you'll have a biased sample. You know, uh, staying here at the Marriott last night, uh, when, when I got into town, I guarantee, and I stay at Marriott's all the time because I'm hooked into their reward system, um, their recognition system for frequent stayers. So uh, um, just had a lovely vacation uh, in uh, Greece, thanks to Marriott. It was a, a freebie for me. Um, but. Um, with, uh, when I stay at a Marriott, almost every single time I stay, they mail me a questionnaire. How was your stay? You know what I do with that questionnaire? It goes right in the trash can. Unless I had a bad experience. And then I fill it out. Because I say, I've got to fix this. And, I, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll fill it out. That's what happens with low response rate surveys. I guarantee you um, Marriott uh, could, would see different scores with their customer group if they thought of some additional ways to assure higher participation than they're getting. I, I'm, I don't think I'm unique. I'm not the only one that's throwing their survey in the trash can. I'll bet you they're not getting a 50% response rate um, with that survey. And if you're not, our data shows that you're biasing your scores towards the negative. It's the more dissatisfied people that will take the time to fill it out. A, a oversample of dissatisfied people will take the time to fill the survey out. So get those response, those response rates up. And um, you've got to convince employees that, uh, and this is why a sample, another reason why a sample of employees won't always work is they will fear geez, just a few people being surveyed and there's some of these demographics on the survey where you're asking me what department I've worked in, how long I've worked here. You know, you're telling me you're not going to be able to identify who I am. And uh, just a few people, I think you'll be able to identify who I am. And you're not going to get an honest answer. If you're doing a census, you tell people it's going to be mass because everybody's doing it. Um, here's another thing I recommend on the, on, on the uh, employee survey too, is you say we're not going to run the data for any work unit where fewer than uh, 15 employees uh, are members of that work unit with specific answers by um, Likert, code, Likert, Likert scale coding. You know, you won't see, you, that, that manager will not be able to see that three people said completely satisfied, one person said, you know, somewhat dissatisfied. You, you, you just will not share that. You'll only share mean scores with departments that have lower than 15 employees because then you can't identify who said what. Confidentiality is critical to, to, to honest answers. Um, and I think you need to have the correct analysis in an employee survey, not just look at raw scores, not just look at, look at mean scores. Let me, let, me, let me 
tell you some analysis that I really recommend that you include in your employee surveys. Um, the, this is uh, an example, um, but you can see the first column is that Pearson's correlation coefficient. And by the way, th this, this data on this slide, I think, tells another important story. I often hear CEOs that I'm working with say this, what, what are your benchmarks, Dave? What's your database look like? How big is it? Uh, I want to be able to be benchmarked against organizations just like myself. And, you know, I, I think there's a place for benchmarks, but I will tell you this, my own prejudice uh, and bias, and I think I have very good um, metrics to support what I'm getting ready to say, is this, that benchmarks are the least important piece of information that you could ask for, the very least. And here's, here's, here's why, and I think the inferential statistics prove this. You look at that first uh, question on this slide, I believe that this is a good place to work, 0.51 Pearson's correlation for this particular client. Almost every employee who said, yeah, I believe this is a great place to work, when we got to the satisfaction question said, I'm completely satisfied. Almost every employee who said, no, this is not a great place to work, when we got to the satisfaction question, they were dissatisfied. Real high correlation with how they answered this question and the satisfaction question. But take a look at the last question there, the quality of food in the company cafeteria. It's got a 0.1 Pearson's correlation. It means employees could say, I hate the food in the company cafeteria. But when we got to the satisfaction question, they said, I'm completely satisfied. Just not a real high, it's not a cor high correlation with how they think about the food in the cafeteria and how, how it is to work in the organization. But you take a look at, you know, Office One that was being measured here. Ha those employees had a 2.99 mean score on five-point scale um, for quality of the food in the, uh, in the cafeteria. And our benchmark is a 351 for quality of food. And there at a 299, which is statistically significantly lower than the, than the benchmark there, um, seventh percentile uh, of our national database uh, on, on that question. If you were just deciding where to put your resources and your dollars based on benchmarks, you'd invest a lot of money trying to fix the food in the cafeteria. Say, we've got to get up at least to the benchmark average. And here's what I would say, if I was CEO of this organization, I wouldn't spend one more dime in the cafeteria to try, to try to get the benchmark there because you could get every single employee saying the food is great in the cafeteria and you're not going to raise your employee morale one bit. They're not going to be any more engaged, any more satisfied. You're not going to change your score one bit if you gave filet mignon uh, you know, uh, every day for free. It's just not a driver. But that top, comp, that top question, believing that it's a great place to work, which, by the way, recognition has a high correlation to that. When you run that as the dependent variable, recognition helps drive whether some, a place is uh, a great place to work. On that question, if you looked at benchmarks, you're at the 81st percentile. Um, you're doing great there. But I would say this. I'd spend my money trying to get to the 85th, the 90th, the 99th percentile, I'd put every dollar there trying to find out how can I make people really believe this is a great place to work before I'd put one dime in, in the place where you're benchmarked really poorly. Benchmarks, um, in my mind, uh, if there is value in benchmarks, it would be to say, okay, here's the most we can probably score because this is the highest any organization's ever achieved. And you might want to look at benchmarks that way. Um, and I, and I say might because, you know, in the measurement that we do uh, among our competitors in the business uh, that we're in, measurement and consulting, um, I know what the average research company scores. I know that Jackson, our client satisfaction, is the highest in the industry right now. But, but, and so we have the high benchmark score. But I will tell you this, and my team will tell you this, that I'm not satisfied that that's the best that can be achieved. I'm not going to be satisfied until every single one of my customers gives us a five. Every single one of our employees gives us a five as a great place to work. So I don't, I don't even look at benchmarks at all uh, as an organization. I'd rather say, here's where I want to get to and, and try to drive managers to get to that. 